So I think I'm going to start a new tradition on the channel where I give out an award each year, the Lice Infected Chipmunk, for the worst movie that I saw in the theater each year. And this year, luckily, I made it to the theater one more time, and the winner of our Lice Infected Chipmunk is... Well, you know what you clicked on. It is Assassin's Creed! It's probably the only award this movie's going to win because it's not... Good! Now before I get into my review, real quick, if you actually liked this movie and thought it was good, not that you just enjoyed it, I get that, I like dumb movies, I like Kickbox Vengeance. but if you actually thought this was a good movie, please tell me in the comment section, explain it to me, because I really did not like that movie. With that said, let's get to my review. Yeah, I never had hoped this was going to be a good movie for the simple reason that I didn't like the video game for the story. The action of it was pretty cool, but the nature of the story was that it's set in present time and you're reliving people's genetics memories and so everything that happens in the action in the past is already preset and so I didn't really connect well with the story of the video game so I didn't really have a lot of hope that I was going to like the movie and I didn't and it works even worse as a movie than it does as a video game and beyond that there's so many problems with this movie first off the genre of it is just all over the place because it's kind of part historic film but not really part martial arts action film but not really part prison break psychological thriller but not really i mean it's all of these different deals it's kind of exploring philosophy none of it's well it's all crammed together into this story and i'm going to tell you right now the the premise of the movie i'm not going to give you any plot as the movie goes forward but just the opening 20 minutes of the movie this is the premise of the movie you learn right in the first couple minutes that there's some device out there called the apple of eden from genesis 3 in the bible that apparently can control or has the key to the secret of free will. And the reason there's evil in the world is because we have free will and this device might be able to enable us to control it. There's two groups of people really interested in our apple. We have the Knights Templar who want to gain access to the apple so that they can take away free will so that they can control people and make people subordinate to them. They want control and they want to take away free will and they believe this will lead to peace in the world. The other group of people, the Assassins, who have a creed, you might say. They want to protect the apple from the Knights Templar so that people contain their free will. And their creed is something along the lines of there is no truth, which itself is an epistemological truth statement. So it's kind of self-contradictory. And there is no right or wrong. So you can do whatever you want. So two, right, we're one minute into the movie and we've got two weird philosophies around a biblical artifact that's not real and not tied to any actual biblical philosophy or theology or anything like that. So we're starting off and I'm already scratching my head going, what? What is this movie doing? From there, we learn that Michael Fassbender is the uh, ancient relative of the uh, assassins. He's kind of this person that's kind of key. His relatives were really important. And uh, Marianne Cotillard and Jeremy Irons are the current members of the Knights Templar. And they've got a magic device that you can take people, hook them into it, and relive the memories of your ancestors. Even when you relive their memories, you can see things that they would not have seen. It's that first person. It's not from their perspective. You just get all the information around that area at that time. So they gain access to Michael Fassbender and they keep putting him in the machine so that they can try and find this Apple deal. This is the first 20 minutes of the movie. This is just the premise of it. Right from the get-go, you know who the good guys and bad guys are. You know the tension of it. You know the twists that are going to happen. Just in the first 20 minutes, from the established information that they have given us, there's no twist turns, big reveals, or anything like that. Right at the beginning, they tell you who's good, who's bad, and why they're good and why they're bad and what their philosophy is. Now, Michael Fassbender, perhaps, I guess you could say he's the wild card in this as he has no affiliation himself personally to any of this, but you can probably guess where he's going to end up in the film and where his allegiance is going to lie. The way the plot story unfolds, the, you only go back into the past three times in the movie. Only three times, and it's not like there's a story thorough line in the past. You just, he hooks up to the machine, and immediately he's in an action sequence. They're trying to grab a kid, they're trying to escape, or something like that, immediately. There's no, so the characters in the past, you have no connection to them. You just see an action sequence, kind of like right now. You can go on YouTube and look up all sorts of action sequences to any kind of movie. So I, I really liked... Um, 
Double Dragon with Mark Dacascos and Alyssa Milano, the video game movie from the early 90s. I don't really like it. It's terrible. You can probably look up some terrible action sequence to it and watch it out of context if you would like. You can look up Jet Li fight scenes. You can look up good, bad. They're all over. You just look them up on YouTube whenever you want and watch a scene out of context. That's what the past sequences are for this because you, they just go, oh, we're looking for this steel, and then immediately we're just seeing an action sequence. That's the way it unfolds, but that's only a small part of the movie. That's maybe a third of the movies in the past. The rest of it, it is set as, at this like mental hospital, hospital slash research facility slash prison place where we're just kind of walking around and meeting people and hearing stuff. That's the movie. And so you have no connection to the past action sequences. The stuff in the present is boring. And all of this is played dead serious. There's like two jokes in the whole movie, just dead serious. So you're going through this unbelievably dumb story about genetic memory with unbelievably dumb philosophy that's uneven and doesn't make any sense and isn't really explored so serious, like they thought that they were like, we've got it, we've cracked the code to the serious, the good video game movie. And they nobody told them like, hey, this movie's kind of dumb. You don't really have a good story plot, like you don't have any of that stuff. And they just go for it, so dead serious. So to talk about the good things about the movie, if I gotta say some good things, I wanna give credit where credit's due. There's some visual flair to it. It looks really nice. There's a lot of gorgeous shots in it. There's some cool shots in it. Uh, the director clearly has an eye for certain types of deals, and there's like a lot of stuff in the past, especially that's done in silhouette, and you can see what's going on. So that's pretty cool. And some of the action has good choreography to it. In certain shots, you can actually see what's going on, so they're handled pretty cool. So that's number two. Uh, the third one would be that uh, Michael Fassbender clearly is a great actor and giving giving his all to this terrible movie. So I think that's it, though. That's all I've got. I've got three positives. It looks cool at parts. Some of the fight choreography is cool and shot well. Michael Fassbender can act really well even in bad movies. That's all the good I've got. Everything else about this is bad, ill-conceived, and poorly executed. So let's just even go with what I just said. I just said that there's some really good fight choreography. Done badly, though, because you've probably heard this in other reviews if you've checked out other reviews, but in the movie, you'll have him go to the past, and he gets in one of these action sequences, and then it keeps cutting back to him in the present day in this big arm machine that's jumping around, showing him doing all the action and movements of the person in the past. And so already inherent in the story problem, like I said about the video game, like I said about this movie, is that you're, you're not invested in the characters in the past, you're just seeing them do an action sequence. And so then we go back and we're in the middle of them and they're shot pretty well and there's some good choreography. So you start to get invested in it just a little bit because the sequence is really good. And then it immediately cuts to Michael Fassbender in the present in his goofy arm with all this weird, overly stylized look to it. So it pulls you out of an already detached action sequence. So it's like if you're on YouTube watching a fight sequence from some movie and you're okay, you appreciate the choreography, but you have no context for it. And then it keeps cutting to like a special feature about the fight choreography in the movie. So those shots of them practicing the fight choreography while you're watching the scene. So you already are not emotionally invested in what you're watching and now you're even detached from it. You keep getting pulled out of it very suddenly. That's what almost every single action sequence in this entire movie is. You're watching something kind of distant that you're not emotionally invested in and you keep getting pulled out of it to see Michael Fassbender in a goofy machine doing this stuff. There's a couple of other fight scenes kind of put in the movie where he's like in a hospital and even in those they find a way to like cut to other weird kind of stuff going on so it pulls you out of all of the action in it. None of it is shot well. As I mentioned before, that's filled with all of these kind of philosophical ideas about free will and fascism and control and removing evil from the world, but it never explores them in a way that takes them seriously. It just per portrays the Knights Templar as the guys that want to gain control as mustache twirling villains. Like, we can get world peace if only people would obey us. 
okay, well now you just turned into a mustache throwing villain. You've turned into Hitler. You, if only they would listen to me. That's what they're portrayed as. There's a, actually an interesting philosophical discussion to be had about if you remove freedom, then you have more safety. And so that's an actual interesting philosophical debate about the world and societies. The more, like, less freedom people have, the less violence action there is. The more diversity, the more freedom people have, the more crazy it gets. And so you're trying to find this perfect balance and tension of freedom versus safety. That is an actual real world currently right now in the world that we live in right now discussion that is being had about politics, role of government, very important. And then it's put in this dumb movie and not explored at all. It's just, they just portray the control side as mustache twirling villains that want control of the world for their own scheme, but then they throw in occasionally for world peace. And then the people that... Their morality code is everything goes. We work in the light to protect. We work in the dark to protect the light. Anything goes. Do whatever you got to do. Just stop them. Those guys are portrayed as the good guys with no exploration of, wait, do anything you want. There is no truth. There is no morality. To, like, why? what are we protecting then? Why, our only morality is there is no truth and their control is bad and people need to be free. But we have our own morality code that tells us something. I mean, it's just, it's self-contradictory on both sides. It's nonsensical. These guys, we want world peace, want to get world peace by killing people. I mean, there's so much self-contradictory philosophy because it's not handled accurately. It's not explored in any sort of meaningful, normal fashion that anyone that's taken a high school philosophy class could explore these ideas better than this movie does, which would be okay. It would be okay if not for this movie's unforgivable sin. As long as we're talking about Adam and Eve and sin in the world and peace in the world, let's add throw so into the mix. This movie's ultimate sin is it's not fun. Like if this movie had this dumb of philosophy and this dumb of a premise and had fun with it, it just went all in, balls to the wall, stupid action video game movie just thriving in the absurdity of these guys want control and their mustache twirling villains and these guys want to save the world by having no morality and being willing to do anything and we just go crazy and it's this not so fun crazy movie that's dumb not smart basically the same plot but fun I could forgive the un this just dumb Philosophy, worldviews, bad ideas, bad plot. The plot device of going to the past, it's a plot for a video game. That's why each time they go to the past, it feels like you're playing a level in a video game. Then you overcome the challenge, and then you go back to the past, and you move on to the next level. It's the next time he goes to the past. Like, it feels episodic, like, like a video game levels, because that's all the plot they have for it. You could forgive all that if the movie was fun. But it's not. It's so serious. Like, the two jokes in the whole movie. It, actually, the, the movie starts off, and it's kind of like in the past and gives you kind of like a setup scene. And then it cuts to Michael Fassbender as a kid riding his bike, trying to do like parkour stuff on his bike and stuff. And it's kind of funny because he fails really bad. And I guess it's setting him up as this wild daredevil man. But it, I felt like, oh, okay, this is going to have a little fun, interesting. No, no. That was it. That's the only kind of goofy moment, funny moment uh, in the whole thing. And then the movie goes on to be so serious. And like you get to the end of the movie and there's like stirring emotional music playing and people are looking at each other and making kind of very empty but very passionate looking philosophical statements and morality statements. And it ends with people like crying. It's just so deadly serious with such a dumb movie. I, I don't... I, like, I feel like they really thought they were going to make this great philosophical morality play dealing with ethics of using Assassin's Creed. And then they got a bad script and they didn't like, like rework things like, oh, crap, this script sucks. All right, let, let, let's go all in, goofy, wacky, insane, have fun with it, tell jokes. No, they just went dead serious unforgivable. It's not so bad. It's good. It's not so bad that it's fun to watch. It's just so bad. It's boring. You want to spend more time in the past because at least that part's fun, even though you're disconnected from the story. Three scenes. Three scenes. And even when you're in them, they're not as good as they should be because they keep pulling back to the present day. The, I, I mean, I, yeah, I don't know. I wouldn't say what I was about to say because it would be a spoiler and I wouldn't want to ruin the movie for you. 
So anyway, that's my take. Oh yeah, and there's I think only one assassination in the movie. They're called assassins, and they don't assassinate people. One assassination. Uh, I think that's it. That is the movie Assassin's Creed. A dumb plot with dumb worldviews, dumb philosophy, action that was almost cool, and then they edited it dumb. The worst movie of the year. Winner of the Lice Infected Chipmunk Award of the Year. The worst, most boring, most frustrating movie I saw in theaters all year long goes to Assassin's Creed. I'm gonna give this a three out of 10. The only other movie I gave a three out of 10 this year, I believe, was Hard Target 2, which is a straight to video movie that I'd much rather watch over this because it's, it's at least a watchable bad. This is not a watchable bad, it's just Bad, and I would go lower, like a two or a one, but I give movies that are twos and ones, those are so bad, they're good, they're watchable, and how bad they are, you could sit with your friends and just make fun of it. This one, like watching Michael Fassbender, like, like act his heart out in these terrible scenes, is just tedious to watch. It's not like, oh, that's funny, it's like, oh man, he's like trying to give a great performance in this movie that does not deserve it, unfortunately. So anyway, that's my review of the movie. If I'm being honest, I don't think I'll ever watch this one again. I, I like the whole time I was just watching it thinking to myself, I need to write notes for how many things are just driving me insane about this terrible movie. I actually did walk out of the movie in the middle of it for a little bit just to write notes on my phone for the sake of this review because I care about you guys so much. Don't care so much about this movie. How about you? What did you think of Assassin's Creed? Can you, can someone convince, did someone actually think this was good? Not that you didn't think it was as bad, because a lot of people are giving it bad reviews. Not that you didn't think it was as bad. Not that you tolerated, not that you had fun with it. I get that. If this is your kind of like bad movie that you just like, it. I, I gave a seven out of 10 to Kickbox Your Vengeance this year. Bad movie, I just had fun with it. I get like, I can like it. But if you tell me it's bad, I'm not gonna try and defend it to you. Does anyone out there actually think this movie is good? Please tell me in the comments section. I want to know, because I don't want to just talk about bad movies. I want to talk about bad movies with you. Or maybe you can try and convince me why this movie wasn't as bad as I'm claiming it was. Let's talk about it in the comments section. If you're new to my channel, please consider clicking that subscribe button. Love to talk movies and TV and talk about movie news and kind of give my perspective on it. Rant and rail from time to time. Kind of like this video. It's kind of a review more of an angry rant for me wanting to talk about this movie after I just watch it. With all that said, thank you for watching.